My name is Doreen McHugh. I am a member of St Paul's Church and I have always been interested in the history and unique architectural style of the church. Its heritage value is important not only to the county of Longford but is also important to the tourist whose ancestors once worshipped in this place. I will outline its origins and architecture although its social and religious supports are of equal importance. St Paul's is situated at the southern end of the village of Newtown Forbes and is one of the most significant churches in the county of Longford. This year the present structure built in 1820 is 200 years old. Although COVID-19 has prevented the planned celebrations for its bicentenary, hopefully this account will give a little insight into its heritage value. The church and surrounding graveyard are of regional significance and of architectural, artistic, social and archaeological interest. It makes a significant contribution to the heritage of County Longford. Clongish Church, Graveyard and Surrounds are all protected structures, including a 17th century headstone and a mausoleum to Beatrice, Countess of Granard. About 1691, Arthur Forbes, 1st Earl of Granard, built Castle Forbes and the village of Newtown Forbes. About a quarter of a mile from his house, he built the first established church in 1694. It was described as a fair and large church, sumptuously adorned within. Two years later, in 1696, Arthur Forbes died and was buried in the family vault beneath the church. Two 17th century headstones have survived in the surrounding graveyard. One is to John Fraser, who died in 1698, and the other to James McCord, died 1699, which show that the church and graveyard were in use at this time. Robert Johnston from Aberdeenshire in Scotland is credited with having built the first established church in Newton Forbes. He was connected through marriage to the Forbes family. He later moved to Clonagheher, where he built his own house. His son William was an architect in Armagh and his grandson Francis Johnston, a noted architect in Dublin, who converted the Irish Parliament House into the Bank of Ireland in College Green and also built the GPO. And so we move to the present church built in 1820. It is not documented why the church of 1694 required a new building or was it just a restoration? The present church was built or rebuilt in 1820 and is recognised as one of the most architecturally significant churches with certainly one of the most attractive interiors. According to the Parliamentary Gazette of Ireland, it was rebuilt in 1820 at a cost of £1,384, 12 shillings and 3 pence, raised by parochial assessment and by Reverend George Crawford. The Forbes family commissioned the architect. The present church, designed by John Hargraves, was built during the Regency period with early Gothic Revival, Scots baronial influences, a reference to the Scottish descent of the Forbes family. An unusual two-storey square tower with no spire is located at the entrance to the west of the church. The crow-stepped gables with pinnacles and finials at the ends are most unusual. The architectural detail seen in the stone-cut window surrounds are especially attractive. As you enter the church, you are immediately struck by the many Georgian features of bygone days, including the enclosed box pews and the timber galleries. The most imposing timber feature is the two-tier cylindrical pulpit with an altar set beneath 
and also a prayer and clerk desk attached on either side of the pulpit. Interesting also are the private galleries dedicated for the use of the Forbes family from Castle Forbes, historically the Earls of Granard, and also the Altmuti Musters family. They are designed in such a way as to afford privacy from the congregation on the main floor, but to be fully visible and equal with the preacher on the remarkable original timber pulpit. There is a north doorway entrance and private stairways for the Forbes family. Their gallery is a large room which can accommodate as many as 50 people with its own fireplace, drop leaf book desks, kneelers, cushion seating throughout. The South Isle Gallery was dedicated to the Okmuti Musters family. It is smaller with less elaborate furnishings. There are many memorials on the walls of this gallery. They commemorate Okmuti Muster family members. There is a memorial to General Hay who fought at the Battle of Waterloo. The choir gallery lies to the west of the church. The fine organ was most likely donated by James Bell, the first county surveyor of Longford. It was first used on the Sunday following disestablishment in 1871. It was then powered by bellows and the blower boy was paid 15 shillings a year to blow the bellows. There is also a fine brass memorial plaque to James Bell and his family in the organ gallery. On the main floor, the fully enclosed box pews are a rare feature today. In St Paul's, there are two different styles of box pews. In the nave, the box pews have flat panelling. The fielded panelling seen in the aisle boxes is rare, but may be the only example remaining in churches today, as it is made out of a single piece of timber. Box pews had the advantage of minimising drafts. The interior of St Paul's Church has charming neo-Gothic detail, including the attractive cusped rib vaulting to the ceilings, which is unusual in a country parish church. The arch entrances are framed by attractive clustered colonnettes. A remarkable marble memorial to Sir George Forbes hangs in the chancel and is engraved with his life story of achievements. He restored financial stability to the Castle Forbes estate when he became the third Earl of Granard. He died in 1767 and is buried in the vault beneath the church. There are several memorials of interest which feature members of the Akmuti Musters family and of clergy who served over the years. In the chancel there are two hatchments. Hatchments were designed for displaying the lineage of nobility and were hung in the church at the time of their death. In 2010, the church showed signs of deterioration. A heritage engineer, Chris Southgate, was commissioned to do a report on the condition of the church. He reported that the main beams supporting the roof had decayed and the roof was in imminent danger of collapse. The emergency conservation works were carried out by Frank McKiernan and Sons Limited. The graveyard presently contains over 300 grave plots and these are recorded and documented. They can be accessed from records published on newtonforbeshistoricgraves.com. Visitors from around the globe have travelled to Newton Forbes to research their ancestors. A stately mausoleum featuring four white marble columns surmounted by a carved frieze and pediment, reminiscent of a miniature Greek temple, stands opposite the north entrance to the church, where Beatrice, Countess of Granard, was interred in 1972. Charlotte Brooke, renowned poet and Gaelic scholar, is also buried in the graveyard. Fraser Brown, 
nicknamed Horsey Brown, the only international rugby player from County Longford. He won 12 caps for Ireland, but died at the early age of 28 from leukaemia. He was a son of Canon John Brown, a rector in Newton Forbes. A family of Todd's lived in the townland of Toddstown. Some of the family emigrated to America and a descendant, Mary Todd, married Abraham Lincoln. Many clerics and bishops have served faithfully over the years. Reverend Powell set up the Longford Protestant Orphan Society. Musical concerts and historical talks have been held in the church as well as the very popular songs of praise. The present rector is Reverend Scott and he is in charge of the joint parish of Clongish and Cluncumber, while the current bishop is the Right Reverend Fern Glenfield of Kilmore, Elphin and Arda Diocese. St Paul's Church has served the spiritual and physical needs of the people of Newton Forbes for the past 200 years. In this bicentenary year of 2020, we hope that the generations to come will continue to appreciate their heritage.